This video is a follow-up to my Cattleya purpurata care collab video which I will link below. There are some eye-opening comments under the video which I feel I need to elaborate on and qualify with additional information. Even though I responded to the questions in the comments, the questions that were asked allowed me to clear up any thoughts which my update may have provoked and could result in taking on board what I do for my perparatus because of my specific conditions. So if you're interested in a detailed rundown of what I was talking about in my care collab video, I thank you in advance for giving me the opportunity to qualify the information in more detail, including the why and what I need to achieve in order for my orchids, not just perparatus, to survive into the warmer months of the year. And I got a confirmation for the circle markings that appeared on my leaves for the first time, which I want to share with you so that you have a heads up. It would appear that there is a mutation of sorts of a common pest requiring us to keep our eyes peeled and if your eyes are as bad as mine, magnifying glasses need to be purchased for proper close-up inspections. If you're still here, thank you. I appreciate your interest and hope that the question from Karin's Orchids, Mary G Orchids and more will help you if you find yourself in the situation of when all else fails kind of style. Well, and Stephen Van Camp and Lewis, thank you for the eye opener. So to clear up what I would do in the winter with my perparatus, Mary G asked if I let the reservoir of my pots dry out a bit in winter. And yes, I do. But when I say that I let the reservoir dry out a bit during the winter, that does not mean that I let the pot go dry. It can be easily considered to be one and the same thing, but no. In semi-hydroponics, the pot should not go dry even if the reservoir is empty. If you're growing or are intending to grow orchids in semi-hydroponics with the classic reservoir at the bottom of the pot that has two drainage holes above the reservoir, then allowing that to not be full of water is fine. However, the media you use should not dry out when using inorganic media. Lekka has wicking properties, but these wicking properties turn into desiccating properties if it is allowed to go dry. When Lekka is dry, it still wants to absorb any moisture it has around it, and the orchid roots would be the target if the pot goes bone dry. The Lekka will pull the moisture out of the roots, and well, that would be the end of the root system. So, when I say my reservoir goes dry for a bit during winter, I never let my microfiber go dry. Seeing as my setup is Lekka and self-watering for many of my pots, I have microfiber to pull up the water from the reservoir and into the Lekka. As long as the microfiber is damp to the touch, the Lekka in the pot is damp as well. Keeping in mind, of course, that the microfiber on the outside of the pot will always end up being a little bit drier than what the Lekka is in the pot. So if you were to miss the mark by a day or two with a microfiber being bowed dry, you may have gotten away with it, but don't hesitate to flush that pot immediately if it were to have happened that the microfiber dried out. The quick flush will re-establish the climate in the pot and the lecker will be wet again. Under the circumstances that the microfiber is bone dry, it is not enough to just fill the reservoir and then let the wicking dampen the lecker in the pot again. Personally, if that happens to me, the only way to get that lecker wet all over again is a good flush, a single flush, and then allow the reservoir to either be filled with nutrient solution or plain water. I find there is a sense of urgency to wet the contents of the pot again if the microfiber is dry to the touch. If you have the drilled holes to establish the reservoir and the lecker was allowed to dry out, same thing. Flush the pot straight away and depending on what the orchid is doing, be it an act of growth or not, fill the reservoir accordingly or drain it if the orchid is not actively growing during the winter months. So I want to emphasize that I'm talking winter months in my Care Collab update video because that is what my update was about. The changes I made the winter of 2022 through to spring 2023. During the warmer months of the year, things are easier and more straightforward. So check out my video on seasonal orchid care, which I will link in the description. It may be an eye-opener because 
Our seasons are not the same as orchid seasons. Wink, wink. <laughs> Let me know if this video is in any way helpful, informative, or in any other way raises more questions. Like the video, leave a comment with further questions. I find that one topic can answer questions, but it also prompts more questions, which is exactly what my channel is about. Make this channel work for you, and in order for me to do this work, I need your help and support including your vote of confidence if you have not subscribed to the channel. My stats are showing that many are watching my videos that have not subscribed and I would love to drop that percentage. If you would let me know what I can do for you to subscribe, I will do my best to accommodate. Thank you so, so much. I really want to be here to help anyone grow orchids well, easier and on a budget. So in turn, I so appreciate your help with growing my channel. Thank you. Moving on to a common thread from Karin's Orchids. I read that XYZ Fertilizer claims that there is no requirement for regular flushing when using their fertilizer. This had my alarm bells ringing and here is why. First of all, not because there's anything wrong with that fertilizer, I was blessed with a container and have been using it since 2022. But a fertilizer that claims there is no need to flush is only taking one aspect of flushing into consideration. And if you have found this video self-explanatory up to this point, now is the time to take note. Flushing is not exclusively done to prevent salt buildup. In my opinion, as every orchid is different and takes up fertilizer differently at different ratios, different speed and quantity, we humans make mistakes. We overestimate the growth speed and over-fertilize, and some fertilizer will not be absorbed. Or we think the roots in the pot are fine and we fertilize, but it turns out the roots in the pot are dead, so the fertilizer stays in the pot, creating another toxic environment that could impede any healthy new roots to grow. The quality of the fertilizer does not erase the human error in orchid cultivation. So for a fertilizer to claim that flushing is not necessary really hones in on the fact that the grower will always have the right concentration, the right pH at the right time. That would be the perfect world. And if that were the case, we all would have many orchids still in our collection. However, we're only humans after all. We're only humans after all. Don't put the blame on me. Don't put the blame on me. <laughs> I couldn't help but throw that in. Anyway, I would be very, very careful to take on the marketing claim of a fertilizer stating there is no need to flush if using their product, no matter which brand, or try it out. Use the product, don't flush, and see what happens. But personally, my alarm bells ring, and for that reason, to be responsible with my channel, I want to put it out there that... Do not skip the flushing, no matter the media, no matter the setup, and that includes mounted orchids. Because the second and fundamental reason for flushing orchids is to refresh the media and add oxygen into the pot. When it comes to growing in a wet-dry cycle, that may not be as important to watch out for. Even mounted orchids, wet-dry cycle, plenty of fresh oxygen around the roots. But when it comes to growing in semi-hydroponics, the roots are not exposed to fresh oxygen unless we pour water through the pot. Not only does the water have fresh oxygen, but gravity pulls fresh oxygen into the pot by way of flushing as well. So the salt buildup being something that could cause issues at the surface of the pot, no amount of flushing is going to avoid that if we over fertilize, and the best fertilizer is still going to create salt buildup if we over fertilize. I have a video about that as well, which I will also link in the description, and what to do about salt buildup at the surface of the pot without unpotting the orchids, etc. Check that out if you would like to have a little bit more detail about that. But flushing in semi-hydroponics is huge and should not be skipped because we need to maintain a healthy oxygenated climate in the pot and around the roots for them to grow well. Please do not take the advice of a brand that promotes their product because they know their product is good and gets readily absorbed. You see, the brand is thinking of the quality of their product and not beyond that. 
they are not taking into consideration the need for fresh oxygen around the root system in semi-hydroponic growing. So I hope that helps to clear up why I'm against the no need to flush claim. We are humans, we can make mistakes when fertilizing, we can misinterpret quantity versus speed of growth, etc. Wrong pH, you name it. So much can go wrong, but most importantly, if nothing goes wrong, the orchid roots need oxygen. And to answer the question of how often do I flush, this is all year round. The answer is every time a reservoir is empty and before I fill it again. So that can be once a week at a minimum or two times per week during the winter maximum. During the summer, I am flushing every day, but only the orchids that need their reservoirs filled. I hope that makes sense. If not, I am so happy to qualify that further in the comments as well. Now, to get to the statement that I made about how I'm going about to get the orchids that are at active growth during my winters to grow strong growth, even if they are not as big as they should be, because you see, strong growth does not equate big. It's not about size. It's about strength. And this is specific to my conditions, however it may help someone down the line. I have a video on my conditions, which I will also link in the description, that gives a detailed description of what my orchids have to deal with, especially during winter and into early spring. Briefly though, orchids in my collection that are actively growing new growths or roots do not have supplemental light because I cannot afford the bills. Meaning, during the short days, some of which are dull, no, let me correct that, many of which are dull, dark, and cold, the growth space feels as though it is in perpetual darkness, especially for highlight orchids like Perparatus and other Cattleyas. So, to have cold temperatures, low light levels combined with high humidity and lack of airflow, because the cold temperatures, I try to keep them away from the indoors as best as possible. But everything I've just mentioned, low light levels combined with high humidity and lack of airflow, that is a formula which spells disaster for new growths. In general, not just specific to my conditions, but in general. So if you have these conditions, then I recommend you try and do what I do. Focus on getting as much calcium in small increments into your orchids without going overboard because your light levels may not match what you are giving the orchid. You want strong growths, not some long, weak celled structure that is all bendy and vulnerable, vulnerable to pests that like to chew on weak cells. So, up to achieve strong growth and do not think of the size of the growth. What you're trying to do by focusing on calcium is to ensure that black rot does not stand a chance to manifest itself on the new growth, which will pose all sorts of other threats to your orchid. Even a small stunted growth that grew in less than ideal conditions will produce roots. And here I am again focusing on the root system. The aim is to keep the orchid alive during adverse conditions and hope that one day things will change and we can go gung-ho again without having to tiptoe around our conditions and getting orchids to make it through those conditions. But alternating with CalMag still focuses on the calcium. However, the added magnesium will help the orchid photosynthesize the light it can get. If the orchid doesn't bloom, but the growth matures and grows its own set of roots, you have one. That is where I'm coming from when I talked about how I focused on calcium nitrate and CalMag in my Care Collab video. But if you can afford to use supplemental light, then what I mentioned in my update does not apply to your orchids. If you can provide the optimal conditions throughout the winter months for the orchids that are in active growth, the focus should be on the standard care and not deviate away from that. My conditions and what I'm doing now is useful to anyone dealing with adverse conditions while orchids grow new growth. So if those conditions do not apply to you and everything is hunky-dory in your growth space, then my commentary in the Care Collab video, it was an update on how I and not an how-to. I will add an image of the calcium nitrate that I use, which I sourced from Amazon. 
And wow, this little container is pricey, so just a heads up on that. Back in the day, when everything was hunky-dory in my grow space, I bought two containers but did not need as much of it as I was growing in a controlled environment during the winter. So it goes a long way. Small and pricey as it is, it does stretch a long way. However, now, though, <laughs> yikes. I need to get me some more before the next winter comes, that is for sure. And finally, the annoying yellow spots that I have been having a go at, which appeared as if by some kind of form of orchid sorcery, are completely new to me. Stephen Van Campen Lewis left a comment that at least confirmed what I saw as symptoms, but I had not seen scale on my perparatus when these started. Trust me. As I was doing something for the first time with my perparatus this winter, I was keeping a very close eye on them, and I did not see any scale. Turns out, the magnifying glass I had in my drawer of orchid goodies is now within as close reach as my garlic alcohol. Stephen Van Camp and Lewis confirmed that it is in fact scale damage, but this new mutation, and that is me being facetious, is so tiny we can't see them with the naked eye. How about that? Can you believe it? Suddenly, I consider the ones we can't see not so much of a nuisance anymore. But these little itty bitty ones we can't see? Oh boy, here we go. These newcomers are a total different threat because, well, one day you get yellow spots, the damage is done, and well, at least then we have to start taking countermeasures. But until then, huh, prevention, prevention, prevention is all I can say at this point in time. Uh, yeah, it's got me a little bit freaked out, to be honest with you. But thank you so much, Stephen Van Camp and Lewis, for lifting the veil off of that mystery. Fernanda Nathimento orchids and succulents, now you know as well, because it started happening with your perparatus round about the same time as with mine. I guess these beasties have made it across the pond and arrived on the shores of the Iberian Peninsula. And no, no bienvenido for them. But it is a relief that we are not starting with virus symptoms, something I was very concerned about. <clears throat> CG Roebling, I am looking at you. <clears throat> I sincerely hope that if you listen to the end that this follow-up was helpful, clarified a few things, and differentiated your conditions from mine, or helped you if your conditions are similar to mine during the 12 months, where part of those months are less than ideal. And if you already knew everything I was going to say, then may I thank you for your support for still watching the video. Know that I appreciate it, and I hope that in the meantime, you enjoyed the blooms once again. But my thank you goes also to everyone for watching the video. Muchas, muchas gracias. If it has prompted any further questions, ask away. Ninja is not just a name, but it is an acronym as well. Never in need, just ask. Have a fabulous day on that one condition though, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.